Well, kids are in the house today. That is so much fun. And uh, parents, I just want to encourage you, come sit down here. It was so awesome to watch people worshiping with their families. Like that was so cool. So you guys come down here and just hang out and have fun. And I've been told that we will have some little worship flag things. I don't dance with a flag, so does this look right? <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> so anyway, we're so excited about that. And if you're a guest today, what we have done is we, our next gen ministry, we've pushed pause on it for the month of September so that all of our um, volunteers can get a break. And I'm also working with the next gen team to put together some new structure that will maybe work a little bit better for us moving into the future. And so those of you that have stepped up and volunteered so that those guys can be in the service with their families, I just want to say thank you. Uh, you guys are awesome. Well done. Well done. And uh, I know it's already been mentioned, but wow, we got brand new lights in here. Can we give it up again for the building and grounds team? Man, wow. Just amazing. I walked in today and I'm like, hey, they're all the same color. And it's kind of warm, right? Yeah? yeah? Awesome, awesome work, guys. There is so much that goes on here, and without you, it would be impossible. There is so much, and I just want to thank all of our volunteers for everything that you're doing. Uh, I've had the privilege to meet with all of our ministry teams, and man, I'm just blown away with the heart and the love that people have for this church and for you. And so can we just say thank you, Lord, for that? Isn't that awesome? Yes. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. So, Father, I come before you this morning. And, Father, I thank you for the worship. And Father, I am so thankful that nothing is better than you. Father, I know sometimes, at least in my life, I've been in places where maybe I've questioned that. And Father, there may be people here right now questioning that. And Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would have the freedom to move in our hearts, to sensitize us to your leading, that we can hear your voice. And Father, that we would leave here today with a conviction that nothing is better than you. In your name I pray, amen. amen. So we are in a series called The Way of Jesus, and um, Pastor Ron started this. How, how long ago did you start this series? Beginning of, Beginning of the year. So we've been working through Ephesians, and I don't know about you guys, but I learn something new every time Pastor Ron gets up here and speaks, and I am learning stuff new just preparing for the series. And so it's been fantastic. And so today we're going to continue forward, and we're going to look at just a couple of short verses, which I'm so thankful of because I had the big passage before, right? So only a few short verses today. Let's look at these verses together. So Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17 says this. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Do not act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Let's have a quick prayer. Father, I pray now that as we enter your word, that your spirit would lead us and guide us through this time and that we would walk out of here convinced that what we do matters. In your name I pray, amen. You know, often when we look at these verses, I don't, I don't know about you, but I have a tendency sometimes when I'm reading a passage of Scripture, if I'm not real careful, I have, I have kind of squirrel brain, right? How many of you have that problem? Yeah. And so sometimes I actually will read over verses and, and maybe not give enough importance to what I'm reading. Have, have you ever been there? And then later you hear someone talk about it and you're like, I read that passage and I didn't get anything out of it. Yeah. It's not because you, there's nothing there. It's just because we usually squirrel brain. And this is one of those passages that I think we really have to dig down into. These verses are very powerful and very rich. 
but only if we believe it. I want to show you a few questions here that I want us to work through today that I think are really, really important for this passage. So these questions will determine whether you believe this passage of Scripture or not. These questions are so powerful. Does my life matter? Does what I do or don't do matter? Does it really matter? And I guess it depends upon our definition of matter. And so I want to read it to you here. What I mean by matter is that we are important and we can affect affect change. If you believe that, then yes, it really does matter what we do and what we don't do. You know, interestingly enough, I, I, I have a tendency to think like big meta things. Anybody in here like that? You kind of think about big things, things that you really don't get answers to. I was watching a, a video the other day and uh, it really started, I, actually, let me back up. There, there was a comedian I was watching. Do you guys ever cruise Instagram and just watch the comedians? Or am I the only one that does that? All right, finally, one person in here. I don't feel so strange. Thank you, brother. So I, I do. I like going. I like looking at and laughing and all of those kind of things. And there was this one comedian that was talking about this. And he said, so a lot of you think you're born in America. Well, you need to zoom out, is what he says. Zoom out and realize that you're on a speck of dust in the middle of a solar system that is so big, we... Like, we can't even travel it. Our universe is massive. And it even, once you get outside of our universe, there's even more universes. And it's massive. And the further you go, the further it expands. We realize that we are just little droplets on top of a droplet spinning around in space held up by nothingness. (laughs) Does that make any sense? And you know, that thought has actually created a lot of despair. That thought has actually created a lot of despair amongst our younger population because everything is so big and so massive. Does it really matter who I am? Do I matter? Is my life important? And is what I do or don't do important? Now, a lot of self-help people, a lot of maybe spiritual gurus, their immediate answer is going to be yes. Yes, it is. But I want to look at the answer that God, the creator of it all, gives us. He says you matter. As a matter of fact, you matter so much, he died for you. He died for me. He came and he lived as a human. And, you know, oftentimes when we think about the sufferings of Jesus, we, we think about the cross and the burial and the resurrection. But my brothers and my sisters, he suffered here with us for 33 years. He was born into the lowest poverty you can possibly imagine. He didn't come into power. He knows what it's like to hurt, to feel betrayed. He even knows what it's like when his family, if you read Mark, his family even shows up and they're like, look, this guy is crazy. Can we just take him home? Like Jesus knew what it was like to suffer and he did that for us because we do matter. The author of Psalm chapter eight talks about this. He talks about the grand scope of it all. And then He goes into this place, but what is man that you're mindful, that you think about and you care about us? Isn't that powerful? I mean, when you think about how small that that picture of the ever-expanding universe, there was this one on that Google had where there was this lady laying in the grass and all of a sudden it zooms way out. It goes all the way from, the, from there to space, to beyond the planets, beyond our solar system, beyond our universe. And it, it's just mind-boggling that we're actually the thing that God thinks about. 
that he loves us and he cares for us. So my brothers and my sisters, you matter. And what you do matters. Why do you think the enemy and the flesh is always trying to tell you you don't? It's because even the enemy knows your potential. Amen? Amen. He knows your potential. He knows that the Spirit lives in you and, and that power is limitless. We have no ceiling unless we create our own ceilings. Amen? Amen. Because we do matter. And what we do matters. I want to read you this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. It says, Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials. Gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. I don't know about you, but I want the first three in my home. Yeah. Right? But I'm in wood, hay, and straw. There we go. But on judgment day, Fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if the person's work has any value. If the work survives, the builder receives a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Now that sounds like a whew, tough verse. But what's happening here is Paul is letting the Corinthians know that you matter and what you do matters. And I don't know about you, but I think I can identify with the Corinthians. It's so easy to get distracted on things that don't matter. Isn't it? I mean, I've been in situations where I've seen families struggle with the fact that they don't have a lot of close connection. And part of the reason why is they have a husband maybe that plays hours of video games every night. And it's like, it, it happens to all of us. Maybe it's not video games, but it happens to all of us. We just spend a lot of our time on things that just really don't matter. And what happens is, is when we spend our time on these things, we think everything is good and fine. And what we don't realize is eventually the enemy is going to pull the rug out from underneath us. And we're going to realize, wow, none of, none of that matters. I can remember thinking back as, as I was pastoring at Dalhousie. That was the church in Calgary that I came from. And I remember having a moment where I was thinking about my own children. And I was thinking about the time or lack of time that I've spent with my kids. And I remember thinking, what were the things that took me away from that time? And I couldn't even remember them. Any of you have those moments yet? If you haven't, you will. You have those moments. And it's why, because we are built to do things that matter. That's why the enemy comes against us so strongly in these areas is because he doesn't want us to live to our potential. But yet the God of the universe, the God that created it all, the God who died for us, who rose again for us, that is present with us, whose spirit lives within us, tells Paul to write to these believers, not only in Ephesus, but for all time, that it matters so much, he's actually going to tell us how to live. And I'm so thankful I'm not left to my own devices to know that, aren't you? And so there's a lot of stuff here that is really, really powerful. So I want us to look at, let's go to the next slide. I want us to look at this again. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Now, like last week, I talked about there was two paths that we could choose to walk. One of them is the path of love, and the other one is the path of what? Lust. And 
we have the power of choice and they're going to lead us to two completely different places. Guess what? The same is true here. We can choose to live wisely or foolishly. And whatever choice we make, there's benefits and there's consequences. One of them is gonna land us someplace really cool. The other place, ah, uh, not so much. So what does it mean here to walk wisely? Well, it's capable of understanding the times. It's able to comprehend that the current age is evil. Foolishly, it looks like we fail to appreciate our surroundings and we cannot evaluate ideas or discern events. Did the TV just turn off again? Did I touch that? I, I didn't mean to break it, I'm sorry. Uh, but wow, so let's look up there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what I did, all right. So when we're looking up here, it, it's important for us to realize we have a choice here. And living wisely means that I can discern the things that are going on. I can discern situations and, and, I'm, and I'm thinking through my responses and I'm, and I'm choosing how I live in that. Foolishly almost is like kind of, you're, you're just kind of caught up in yourself and you're not really thinking about others and and you're just making maybe some knee-jerk reactions in life, and, and, and maybe some of those things are leading us down some, some bad paths. But what God says here is, listen, be careful. Be careful how you live. Choose to walk wisely. Choose not to walk foolishly. Let's look at the next slide. So here we have to make the most of our opportunities is what the verse says. Now, this is kind of really interesting here. When it talks about making most of these things, it talks about the idea of buying or gaining an advantage. Actually, one of the words that could be used here in, in some translations, it says, redeem the time. Buy it back, redeem it. Uh, we, we love that word redeem because we've been redeemed, amen? We've been bought back. And here we have Paul telling us, listen, making the most of opportunities means that we're going to buy moments. Now, I want us to wrap our heads around this for a second. Um, it, this is kind of mind-blowing. It could be said to buy every moment and use it for good if we don't, evil will. Paul urges us to see the world through an eschatological starting point. Now, I want you to help me with this. Are you ready? Say, I want you to repeat after me. Okay? Say, ooh. ooh. Shane. Shane. Nose. Nose. A. A. Big. Big. Word. <laughs> there we go. Shane knows a big word. Here we go. Eschological. What does that mean? I don't know. It just sounded, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> it means end times, end events. And Paul was constantly trying to bring attention to the fact that Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming back. Jesus himself said he's coming back. And so we have a lot of work to do. There's, there's this built-in urgency in Paul's message. Now, that was 2,000 years ago, and needless to say, some of that urgency might have gone away. But it shouldn't. Why? Because guess what? Jesus is coming back. <laughs> he is coming back, and there's a lot of work for us to do. Amen? Amen? There is a lot of work for us to do, so we have to view every moment in that prism, in that vein. As a matter of fact, James says how arrogant it is for us to think that tomorrow, we're, well, not tomorrow because we have Labor Day, they didn't, <laughs> but Tuesday, right, we're going to go to work. 
And we're going to go and we're going to buy and we're going to sell and we're going to do all these things. And he says, don't you know that your life is just a vapor? It's here for a moment and it's gone. But rather we should say, if God wills, tomorrow I'm going to go do this, that, and the other thing. We live incredibly short lives. Even if you're 100 years old in the light of eternity, that is just a drop. It's, it's not even a drop. It, it, it's mind-boggling. But what we do with that little drop matters. It matters what we do. I don't understand it all. I really don't. I, I can't get my mind wrapped around it that this guy, Shane, 51 years old, it matters what I do and don't do. And it matters in a way, like I was talking to Pastor Ron this, this week, and he, he was listening to me and being the Gandalf that he is. <laughs> that's a wise character, by the way, <laughs> that does magic tricks. He's going to do magic for you next time he preaches in a few weeks. <laughs> he said, yeah, it's like kind of a ripple effect, like, throwing a rock into a pond and how it ripples out. We can't comprehend the ripples that we make. We can't comprehend it. We have that potential and God believes in us. He's like, you matter and what you do matters. So view it from this prism, that time is short. And listen to me, that means that when we go into work on Tuesday or tomorrow when we're hanging out with family and friends or this afternoon we're running out for lunch or for dinner or whatever, that in those moments we have to realize that those are our only moments. And Paul says we gotta buy them back. Buy them, use them for good. The problem is sometimes is that we don't do that. We do what verse 17 says. Let's look at this. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. So he's got two commands here. Stop the foolish behavior. And he urges us to use our minds and choose wisely how to act. Now, this is important. Why? Because we live in a culture that is full of knee-jerk reactions. Have you noticed that? I mean, it's, it's the, it, it is such a strange time to be living. <laughs> because something will happen and nobody thinks through it. We just react. Right? Even like when we're doing little things, like little things, but they're actually huge things, like parenting. We react to our children versus responding to our children. We react to our colleagues versus responding to our colleagues. We react to our spouses versus responding to our spouses. We react in our friendships versus responding in our friendships. See, reacting and responding are, again, Two different things that are going to take you to two different places. What God wants us to do is to respond. To pause our reaction just long enough to ask the simple question. What does Jesus want me to do? What would Jesus want me to say? And I don't know about you, but sometimes my reaction and the answer to that question are very far apart. It's just the way it is. And so what Paul is saying to us is this. He's saying, listen, my brothers, my sisters, my friends, God that created it all is intimately involved with us. And he wants us to live wisely. He wants us to make every moment that we can count for something that matters. I remember one time we were just asking when we were going through COVID in Calgary and you could walk into the grocery stores, you know, in, in the grocery stores you have the one lane aisles. 
Did y'all have to do that here? Okay, you would not have been impressed with your pastor. I refuse to follow the arrows. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing everything else, but I'm not walking all the way around the store to get something that I can step right here and just pick up. How many of you did that? Thank God I'm not alone in that. <laughs> but I remember just challenging our church, and we did this as a family, that, hey, through COVID, there was so much negativity and so much anger. People are not talking to each other. They're, 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 we're losing community. And so I said, hey, when you go through the grocery store lines, pay for the person behind you or pay for the person in front of you. Just buy their groceries. And when they say something, just tell them that, hey, I just hope you have a great day. I, I love Jesus, and I think this is what he wants me to do. The stories that we got back from the responses of people. There was one guy, Brennan, our associate pastor, he, he went through and he was watching all these craft macaroni meals go through, right? And, and what are those pouches of noodles? Uh, thank you. <laughs> going through. And he looked at the guy and said, you're a college student, aren't you? And he goes, how did you know? And he's like, well, it's pretty obvious. And he goes, hey, I'm, I'm going to buy your, your groceries. And the guy's like, why in the world would you do that? And he said, listen, man, Jesus has been so good to me that I just want to turn around and be good to others. And I just want to pay for your meal. And that college kid broke down and started crying because what Brendan didn't know at the time is that that was all that guy's money. He didn't even know where his gas money was going to come from. And guess what? He showed up at church and guess what? He told people about it and guess what? They became really curious about weird church people who buy other people's groceries. <laughs> Just the simple ripple effect. Just that simple effect. My daughter, my daughter... She convicts me. She is the most amazing person that I know of. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, yes, absolutely, right? Yes, 100%. All of us have kids, we all believe that, but mine really is. <laughs> my, my daughter has such a sweet spirit, and hopefully the second week of October, you're gonna get a chance to meet her. And uh, she's got such a sweet spirit. And in the middle of that sweet spirit, she lives in chronic pain every day. She had a cyst on her brain as a young child that one day our church came around her, literally not by my asking, but by somebody else's, came around her, prayed for her. We went back for the testing cyst, gone. He says, the spot is still there but she lives in chronic pain. And guess what she does for a living? She works at a school that's a not-for-profit and it's for special needs and for kids with behavioral issues that can't go to regular schools. Last week, she was attacked by one of the students. Grabbed her in a chokehold and was trying to choke her out and all this stuff. And you can imagine what was going through dad's mind, right? I was tempted to react. It wasn't a Jesus response, right? It was something about throwing the kid off a cliff or something. I don't know. I'm just playing, not really. But anyway, it was, it was amazing because when I was talking to her, I was, I was like, Mackenzie, I, I don't know, I don't know. And she just stopped me and she said, Dad, Dad, don't you understand this kid doesn't understand what he's doing. This, this child, the home that he comes from. And dad, I think this is a chance for me to be something significant in his life. And, and I'm like, but girl, you, you, you need to be safe. And she's like, I realize that. But her hope is, is that he can come back into her class. Why? Because my daughter understands the power of love, the power of Jesus. She's trying to make every moment count. 
And it's so convicting to me <laughs> to be her dad. Like, how many of you ever like that with your kids? You're just like, I, I just, it's just mind boggling, right? What Jesus does in spite of us, <laughs> right? <laughs> so she does. She, she really wants to live wisely. And, and I want you to notice here that understanding isn't simply implying knowing the right answers, but living what? Rightly. It's a conscientious choice that we have to make. Now, some people say, hey, every morning when you get up, you should make that decision to just live rightly, live like Jesus wants you to live. I don't know about you, but I can do that in the morning and I'm challenged as soon as I get in the car. <laughs> and so I have to reaffirm that. How many of you with me? And all through the day, we have to make that conscientious decision. I wish it was as easy as just choosing it in the moment. But man, it can be difficult, right? But that's what God is looking for. He's looking for people that, yes, have right answers, but those right answers have worked out in our behavior, in our conduct. We're choosing to live wisely. We're buying the moments back. So you know what? We can't do anything about the past, but you know what? Today you can say, you know what? I'm going to make every moment with my child count. I'm going to respond to them and show them the love of Jesus. Same for your colleagues. Are you following me here? Like we can make this choice. And again, it leads us to two different places. So the question is, what is it that God wants us to do? Well, I have an answer. Actually, I don't. Paul does. What does the Lord want us to do? Well, Pastor Ron talked about it. Imitate God. You say, well, what does that look like? Jesus. Right? It looks like Jesus. Walk in love. Have your life others focus. I wish I had somebody tell me this when I was planning to go to university, but I was a knucklehead. I probably wouldn't have listened anyway. But this would have been a cool thing to hear. Shane, don't go into university thinking about what you can do or what career you can have. Think about what you can do to help others. What are your passions? And how can God use that to help others? Why? Because that's walking in love. And the last one is stay away from lust. I'm not going to re-preach that message, but don't live a life that's centered around you. Live a life that's centered around Jesus. And I promise you, as I'm standing here right now, as sure as the wood is holding me up, hopefully, that you, I can guarantee this, if you choose to walk the path of love, it will look drastically different than the other path. Amen. And the effect that you will have, the life that you will live matters intensely. And the things that you do matter for all eternity. That's hard for me to wrap my brain around, but it's true. So here's a few things I'd like for us to think about this week. What are some moments that you can easily identify that you need to redeem? Maybe it's with your child. Maybe it's with your grandchildren. Maybe it's with a spouse. Maybe when you go to work on Tuesday. And if you're working tomorrow, I'm sorry. If you let us know where you're at, we'll come by and keep you busy. <laughs> but we know these moments. They present themselves. Let's redeem those moments. And then here it says, what are some things that we're engaged in that we need to stop? What are some things that we're doing right now that isn't going to matter? And how much energy is that taking from us? How distracting is it? Ask those questions. And if you don't like those answers, guess what? You have the power of choice. You can just say, you know what? I'm not doing that anymore. And move forward into what God wants you to do. And this last one. This one's going to be a tough one. This one here. How can we stop knee-jerk reactions and have thoughtful responses? So this week, you're going to be challenged. I'm going to be challenged to give a knee-jerk reaction. Let us purpose in our hearts that we're going to push pause 
We're going to ask the simple question, Jesus, what do you want me to do or say? And then we go from there, and we're going to watch what God can do. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we are going to enter right now into a time of communion. And, you know, this is where we reflect on Jesus and all that he's done for us. Not just his death and his burial and his resurrection. But I want you to remember this as you're taking communion this morning. I want you to remember that the God of the whole universe, the God that is bigger than the universe, Jesus himself loved you, you so much. And he sees so much potential in you that he died for you. Man, that's powerful. And he believes in us. He believes that we can live amazing lives. And so as we take communion, let's do it with a grateful heart. Do it with a grateful heart that not only did Jesus redeem you, but he believes in you. And he believes in what you can do. So if you want to stand and move and go to the tables all around, there's communion elements. I'm going to encourage you right now to stand and go grab those. And then the worship team is going to lead us through a time of communion.